Oh, Michelle, congratulations on your on your victory. Obviously, it took a physical toll on you there, but uh, how, how are you feeling after after a performance like that? This is the new eyeshadow color, <laughs> black eye purple. <laughs> I, you know, anytime you take damage and you get a victory, it doesn't hurt, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to come home with the victory and go home and see my little monkey. Yeah. Uh, she was having a lot of success early on, right? It seemed like she had, she had the better of the opening rounds, and you had to dig deep and make some adjustments. So what changed over the course of the final few rounds that you were able to start getting the upper hand? I think for me it was just honestly an adjustment with, um, within a couple of inches, you know, the difference in, you know, being a little bit um, – further back and reserved and kind of um, trying to uh, fight on the outskirts versus just kind of biting down, sitting in a little bit deeper and, and like intruding on her space, you know, and just deciding, all right, let's go forward. It, it was clear that it was a battle back and forth, but it, it, later in the rounds, in the, in the latter rounds, it seemed like you were smiling a little bit, even though you, were, you had taken some damage. Can you remember kind of what was going through your head as you're in this grueling battle, but you're, you're smiling? <laughs> It's a fight, you know, it's a fight. This is what we love to do. And I think everybody has that within themselves. It's like fight or flight. I always remember it being in like uh, sport karate and, and getting, you know, kicked in the face and just f seeing the blood come down and, you know, seeing the blood and, you know, not wanting to retreat, but actually wanting to move forward. And it's, it's, sometimes you just have to get hit to, to feel that way. Like, all right, let's go. You know, this is a fight. <laughs> of course, you know, you never know what the judges are going to see. But as far as you and your team, um, when it came time to read the decision, how did you feel? Did you think you'd done enough to win, or were you were you a little worried? Yeah, absolutely. You know, after after the third, after the, the takedown, I feel like the the tides changed. I felt like um, I was the, the aggressor. I was the one, you know, um, in her face, pushing the pace, and and landing the harder shots. Last thing for me. Where do you want to go from here? I mean, obviously that was a big win, high-profile victory over a tough opponent. Imagine you kind of want to uh, rest a little bit after this, and like you said, enjoy the family. But what's <laughs> what's the next move for you? Um, the goal has always been to fight for the belt. You know, I've been chomping away at this for a really long time, and um, I want to get there. You know, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like I'm, like, chipping away and chipping away, and I can't turn around. I just got to keep going forward. Michelle, uh, to, your, to your right, when you say that, you say you want to fight for the belt, you're coming in off of two losses. You start off maybe two rounds down, right? You know you're kind of behind on the scorecard. So does it go through your mind, hey, everything I work for all my career, I need to step this thing up or else I'm going to be in trouble and lose a lot of what I'm, I fought for? Yeah, I think that sometimes when you put all of that pressure on your back, it can be overwhelming. You know, two losses, <clears throat> it, this has to be a win. You know, we're fighting for a main event, five-round fight with one week's notice. What happens if I lose the fight? Will the UFC cut me? I've been fighting for over 13 years. Where is my career going to go? Like, you know, <laughs> the, the thoughts in your mind can, can, can become overwhelming. So I, I just decided to, to dump all of those thoughts and go in there and fight, do what I love to do. And as, as you were making the comeback, like as, say, you got into the fourth round, you turned the tide in the third round, as you got there, did you say, okay, this is where I want to be? And, like, was there something inside of you that was talking to you and keep doing this? It was like, you're having fun. You know, you're, you're connecting. Why do you train so hard, you know, in the gym? Why do you, you know, push the pace in the gym? Why do you do the sprints? Why do you do strength and conditioning? Why do you kill yourself so much in the gym for it to not come out in the fight? Let it come out. Dana had talked a lot when he was here about, you know, how he knew that the UFC would be successful during the COVID era because of the way the fighters are wired. And so I guess I wanted to ask you, like, what makes you, A, want to do this, be a fighter to begin with, and then B, in an era where they're saying stay at home, wear masks, don't, you know, shake hands, don't go out, and you're going against all that stuff and doing all that other thing. What is it about you that makes you love it so much that you'll take all these risks to your life and your health and your safety to do it? because those are the things that make you feel the most alive. You know, like, I think it's important to understand that, you know, it, it's a time of, we're, we're in a pandemic, but it's also important to understand that you only have one life to live, and how are you gonna decide to live it? You know, and, and I, I'm a strong believer that um, our children learn from our actions. So I'm out here doing it. Thank you. Hey, Thank Michelle. you. Michelle, you, uh, you mentioned about the late notice to five rounds. Yeah. Uh, how much of a difference did that make? Um, I don't think it made a difference at all. I think, uh, you, know, you know, it played to my advantage, obviously, if, if, if everybody thinks that I lost the first two. But, you know, we always train for five. Um, I, I live in high altitude. You know, I'm, I'm always pushing the pace. 
I, I don't have any problem with cardio. So um, I was really ecstatic to go five. Okay. And I knew Angela was game to do it too. And last thing for me, I was curious, you had some very nice words for Michael Bisping on the broadcast. You said that he meant a lot to you and you yeah. looked up to him. What exactly about Michael do you, do you I, appreciate? I just love his um, genuine uh, love for the sport. And I think that he's, you know, um, <laughs> he, he's just uh, really down to earth and, and understands what it is to have a heart of a fighter. You know, sometimes you just have to let it go and go out there. And, and, and I think that... Um, Fighters can can relate to one another in that sense, to where sometimes there's so much judgment cast upon fighters, you know, whether they win or lose, but nobody really understands like all the the stuff that happens behind the scenes, all the sacrifice, all the 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 pain and turmoil and and things that the fighters have to go through in order to to show up fight night. Congratulations, Karate Hottie. Thank you. Your last seven fights have all come down to decisions. What are those thoughts going through your mind in those final moments before you hear the results? Um, you kind of just, you know, you, <laughs> you hold your breath. It's, 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 it's one of those things. Yeah, my last fights have all gone to decision, but since I've been signed to the UFC, my, the only person outside of, you know, my, my UFC debut and Angela have all been t against top t 10 opponents top ranked top 10 opponents, you know, and Angela, you know, like Claudia Godella said, is, is underrated. She should be in the top 10. Um, and, and so when you get up to the upper ech echelons of, of, of opponents, it's hard to secure those, those finishes and, and you can't, those are things that you can't plan or those are things that you can't force because if you try to force it, then, then, um, then you can see it, you know, so you just have to let it, let the, let the cards come as they may. To get that title shot that you desire, you're gonna probably have to fight someone that you've already fought, like a Joanna Janjacek or a Carla Esparza. Mm -hmm. Do you have a name in mind that you want to fight next that you think you could quickly get a chance to fight for that gold? I don't know. I, I've been, everybody's been asking me that a lot, but my mind hasn't been on anybody but Angela. I think that um, I can't look past my, my, my initial opponent because that's where my focus had to be on was Angela. And like I said, when I was talking to you earlier, like, you know, thoughts about cl like climbing the ranks and doing all of this and, and, and it can become overwhelming. You just have to focus on the fight. You have to be in the moment. And I think, um, I think a lot of fighters can, can become distracted by trying to, trying to get to the, the, the big mountain when they haven't even got up past the first or second, third hill, you know? So, um, you know, whatever is to come, I'm gonna continue to grow and evolve as a fighter. And I'm extremely proud of myself that I've been fighting for over 13 years and I'm still adding to my repertoire as a, as a MMA fighter. I haven't only stuck to, you know, my, my stand-up and working on everything. And lastly, going into the championship rounds, it was kind of back and forth between you two. Where did you see your biggest advantage was for against her heading into that fifth round? I think I had, um, I, I, I was landing the harder shots. I was in her face more. I was pushing the pace. And um, I just wanted it more. Congratulations. Thank you. Michelle, your coach put on the brown belt at the end of the fight. Were you expecting that, and what does it mean to you? Oh, it means the world to me. It's, uh, not at all. I, it, we were just joking around back there, because after he gave it to me, I was like, man, now I can't sandbag as a purple belt anymore. <laughs> but uh, it does. It means the world to me. We've been working really hard. and. Honestly, I really did want to get a submission tonight, but Angela's her, you know, her um, takedown defense is super good, so it didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. But that's the fight game. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you.